Assalamu alaikum. You're listening to the Nikabi Dari series by the pen, the sound of sisters raising their voices with the written word. I'm your host, Samar, and thank you for listening. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of By the Pen. Alhamdulillah, we have with us today Sister Aziza. Sister, could you please introduce yourself a little and tell us about your books, inshallah, because I know that you've written multiple books, right? Yes, <laughs> alhamdulillah. All right. Um, my name is Aziza Idris Muhammad, and I grew up in Gombe State, Nigeria. I have uh, an MSc in computer science from Abu Bakr Tafa University, Bauchi. And I studied uh, Islamic psychology university. I write in two languages, and that is Hausa in English. Sure. And uh, so far, I have uh, like 25 books written. 25? Only... Alamah, Alamah Barak. Yes, 25. <laughs> I mean, Jazakallah Khairan. All right, so I, I also write some um, books about marriage uh, counseling because um, I choose the category of uh, the Muslim fiction romance writer. So um, a lot of people uh, ask me things concerning marriage and relationships. And seeing my little background in Islamic psychology, I decided to help my sisters through um, counseling them in their marital lives and even before they get married so I have a few big books on that also and I'm married with four kids alhamdulillah I live with my husband and kids in Gombe where I run my uh, culinary school Mashallah. Uh, um, wow. during the weekends and during the weekdays I work as a program I'm quite a busy person <laughs> that's pretty much about myself Okay, alhamdulillah. So could you tell us um how did you how did your journey start for writing books? You did mention that obviously you that you're a marriage counselor. So was it there that your book journey um started as an author or, or, or you know, did you have something else that you wrote previous to those um marriage counseling books? It started way before I even got married. <laughs> oh wow. I, I was sixteen when I wrote my first book. And um I I remember being inspired by an author I read um uh, during my secondary school days, um, Fatima Ikara, like um, I always wanted to write. I read a lot of books. So um, I, I was saying that uh, I wish I could write this book. <laughs> I wish I could write this book always. So one of my friends um, uh, suggested that we write a book together some um, one day. So we started um, writing uh, together, but it was just the uh, let us just ditch it please and one day I came across that book um A Glimpse of Goodness by Fatima Ikara I read it and I said wow so someone can write in simplistic language like this because I always thought that for one to be a writer they have to write in a literary sense all those uh, long Fancy <laughs> words all those figures of uh, speech and all those things mm -hmm. must be there so I was scared because I hated literature I hated literature classes, so I, I wasn't paying attention. I don't know how to do that. So I was thinking, ah, it must be hard. But after reading that book, I said, if someone can write this, then definitely I can write my own stories in a simple language too. So that was where I Hausa, my native language, mm -hmm. because that was my immediate community. That was where I I, I sensed uh, the, the problems around me. And I said, if uh, if I can contribute a little, then let me start with my neighbors first. <laughs> so I decided to start writing in Hausa. Um, and from there, it um, kept going and going, <laughs> alhamdulillah. <laughs> um, alhamdulillah. Yes. Alhamdulillah, mashallah, subhanAllah. So um, what would you say, okay, from that first book that you wrote, it was that, like, what was your inspiration then? And like, what was it called? It was called um, Sawi and Shiri, mm -hmm. which means um, a change of plans. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> so what was it about? Um, it actually, it, it was a, a love story, actually, about a young girl that was inexperienced, like myself at the time. And she didn't know... Um, 
the right in from the wrong and she had to be guided uh, along the way for her to find her true self before finding love. So that was what the book was about. And um, I must say it, it, it had a lukewarm response at that time because I didn't know anybody. I didn't have a target audience. I didn't know anything, no social media, no nothing. <laughs> so the research was um, not too deep as I would um, if I was writing a book now. But alhamdulillah, from that, I, I learned a lot from that first experience because it gave me courage. It boosted me and um, it showed me that I can be who I want to be if I put my will to it. So that was a great start for me. Alhamdulillah. 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 So, um, okay. So with that first book of yours, what would you say was the first, like the message that you wanted to get across with that story? Um, um, it was about finding purpose in our lives. Mm -hmm. That story was about finding purpose, um, starting from from just moving through life mindlessly and knowing one's direction, one's focus, one's ultimate goal in life. The book was about that. And um, I think um, Sumaya found her purpose at, um, at the end of the story. Alhamdulillah. So let's talk a little bit about some of your more your most recent book, actually. Um, tell us, you know, what's it called and what was your inspiration behind that? OK, I have um, two recent books, actually. Mm -hmm. One is fictional and the other is um, non-fictional. The first one is, the, is a fictional book called A Circle of Wishes. It's about uh, the journey of a young woman, Hadiza Musa, who at 25, um, relieved her marriage with um, her impulsive husband Abdul Razak Zanna, who is uh, who also known as AR. And for eight years that she had uh, lived with him, she suffered starvation, mental abuse, and he became increasingly obsessive about her. So the death of her husband, uh, of her father, and the death of her young son from neglect brings matters to her to a head for Hadiza. And she determined to get um, a divorce from her husband to go away from him. But that was when the husband insists that they are meant for each other and, she, and he will never leave her. <laughs> so a uh, battle of survival ensued between them. And um, she got many surprises, of course, uh, but she was determined to get a new life. And that was um, Hadiza's story, A Sackful of Wishes. So, and the second one is the non-fictional book. Um, they are actually a bundle, like a series. One is Before You Tied a Knot, a, a marriage series for those people looking to get married the right way. And um, the second one is Create Your Happy Home, which um, is a little guide for one and their spouse that will walk them through marriage the right way using Islamic rulings as guidance. So those are the those are my letters work and inshallah on Thursday um I will be releasing another book uh, in Hausa and that's called My Maitatarihi which means um history re repeating itself and um that story is actually a roller coaster because it it took me like five years to finish writing that story. Oh my God. And um, I'm totally invested in it. <laughs> it's in Hausa, not in English, but- um, so, so what's it What's it about? I don't speak Hausa, but what, what, is it, what is it about? Because it sounds interesting. Yes. <laughs> okay, it's a journey of a um, woman that um, got married um, to an uh, older husband. So, she went into polygamy hmm. and she thought that everyone's heart was pure like hers. So nice. it was her struggle in that polygamous um, marriage mm -hmm. and um, how her children came to view her, how her husband viewed her and how he took life. And the uh, story actually tackles the misconception that people think that if a woman is educated, or if she uh, comes from a good background or a well-to-do family, that she's entitled to be contented in her life. 
mm. uh, which doesn't happen that way. A lot of people think that ah, if she's suffering, if she's depressed, let her just find a job. Let her find something to do. Like as if automatically by getting that, she will be out of her troubles or mm. her, tro- her troubles would vanish or something like that. So uh, Maria Masedika's story is such and um, we see how she um, gets her second chance in the story and how she battles it all. It's a long, long, long story. (laughs) I think one of my longest stories so far, about 1,200 pages. Wow. Wow. So that's like (laughs) an epic tale then of of her whole life by the sounds of it. Yes. Wow. So what inspired you to write this particular book? It's actually inspired by a true life event. And um, after uh, going back and forth with the people involved, um, where I got my inspiration from, I finally um, took the courage to write their story. Because sometimes I, if, if, when I start, I just feel like, what if I don't do justice to these people? Because this is something, this is something huge. And I, I need to do justice for these people involved. And Alhamdulillah, with time, I um, I looked into the the lives of the these people and um, uh, took the good, the bad, and and all those things that came from their life and pieced them together as a form of story. And Alhamdulillah, they were actually um, they were delighted that at least someone will learn learn from their own experiences. And um, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, it will be released on Thursday um, December, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Sounds sounds really, really interesting, most definitely. Alhamdulillah. So um well, I don't I don't speak Hausa, but I'm sure that um some other sisters will be <laughs> um you know interested in this story, especially if they like a long read, mashallah. So um what would you say um yes, with, I hope your, so. with your latest with your latest books? Okay, so you've mentioned the um the, you've got the kind of marriage um you know counseling series it was just two books and then you've got this one that's yeah. going to be released yeah. as well and the other novel as well that you mentioned so yeah. what would you say yes. because I mean you you're writing a lot upon Allah yeah. about it so what would you say has been like some of your biggest challenges um you know doing these three books recently and put, bringing and putting them together because I mean ha- and how do you how do you go about it I mean yeah. You said that it's taken you five years to c- collect this, um, you know, to put together the um, the Hauser, this Hauser book. Yes. And then you've got those other books yes. that you've also released recently as well. So how do you manage to even, like, cope with writing so many books? And, you know, <laughs> you've got your culinary school as well, so that, you know, obviously your, your wife and mother. Yes. So how do you balance all of these things? Alhamdulillah for a supportive family, because I always say this, if I don't get um, supportive people around me, I wouldn't have done half of what I am doing currently. And um, I usually um, manage my time quite well because um, if I have a project in mind, I make sure that not a day passes by without working on that project. Mm-hmm. So I usually write at night and during the day when I'm somehow busy, Whenever I get a free time, I just slot in a, a little bit of reread or a sort of mini edition. I do some editing during the day and I write at night. Sometimes um, whenever the inspiration uh, clicks, I just take my phone out and write so that I won't be doing some major writing on a laptop. Rather, I will just write down my ideas so that when I come sit down to write, I'll just write them down and um, my major challenge has been like uh, to keep going on because sometimes one just feels like not doing anything at all yeah. there is this point yes uh, someone will just hit a rock and just feel like not doing anything at all and um, if one doesn't pick themselves up again they are just going to remain in that rut so that has been a major challenge because between writing books, um, there is pregnancy and its challenges, then mm-hmm. there is running the house, then there is going to work. 
So sometimes um, I take a break from writing, from reading, from doing anything. I just do my major, major, major roles, like as a wife, as a mother. I take a deep breath and relax, then go back to my writing. Because um, I believe that uh, when whatever mood a person is in, it reflects in their writing. So if I'm happy, I, I do happy writing. <laughs> uh, but if I'm not happy and I'm like exhausted, it shows in my work because it feels um, stifled and lacking somehow in something. So I make sure that I take care of myself and um, do what is uh, needed for me and for my writing. Okay, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So, uh, what would you, uh, you know, you've mentioned that you're, um, you know, you get, you've got support from your family. So, um, alhamdulillah, I was going to ask you as well, like, yes. who would you say were your biggest supporters um, while writing in, in general? Actually, you see, my husband and my father, like this too, mashallah. The first time I told you I started writing at 16. So when um, a lot of people in my society then were, were they, they took um, writers, especially house writers as people who just um, write um, fairy tales and useless stories. So when I walked up to my father and told him that I want to write a book, he said, then write a book. I said, but wouldn't you mind it that I'm writing a book, your, your daughter would be a writer. He said, no, you can write a book and you can also study at the, uh, at the same time. So one shouldn't have to take away from the other. Just go ahead and write. So that boost, I think whenever I need, I feel the need to stop, I say, ah, I won't let this old man down. <laughs> I need to write. So as for, he motivated me a lot. And even, even now, if I release a book, my father takes some copies. And he distributes it to his friends and he asks them to take it to their families and let them read the book his daughter has written. <laughs> so that actually makes me feel really good about myself and about what I do. Alhamdulillah. Then my husband. And whenever I have a new project in mind, I tell my husband that I have a new story. I'm working on such and such. Uh, he, he will not keep asking me that how far with that story you are working on how far with that book you are working on when is it coming out <laughs> so he keep motivating me it means a lot to me like having all those kind of support alhamdulillah <laughs> alhamdulillah sometimes when i'm talking about it that's when i even realize the depth of it all alhamdulillah <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Mashallah. It's great that your husband is there to give you that back in and support, and as well your father as well. Alhamdulillah, Allah Mubarak, Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. So, um, would you say then that you always wanted to be an author? Because you did mention that you know you've always loved like reading books and everything since you were young and everything. So, is it something that you thought that you could accomplish? Because since your first book was at the age of sixteen, did you always have that belief that you would definitely be an author one day? I never thought, I'd never seen myself as a writer and um, I, I I usually read a lot of books but I'd never envisioned myself as a writer except for that year when I started experimenting with my friend when we started writing um our experimental book that was when I I thought oh so maybe I can do this but it has never been a long a lifelong dream or something like that so I would say I picked that uh um hobby or skill along the way until it has become something i do professionally as i mentioned earlier i didn't like my literature classes so i always thought that it was daunting but when i started um writing around the age of 15 16 i realized that it, it was something i was enjoying um a lot so i would say that i pick up that um hobby at, um along the way until it has become something I do professionally. Alhamdulillah. 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 So um, what kind of advice would you give to other women, specifically Muslim women as well, um, who are like yourself are balancing so many different things, you know, but they feel that they would like to write a book as well? What kind of advice would you give them? Actually, um, I will always tell people about being dedicated in what the, whatever they want to achieve in life they have to work towards it mm -hmm. like it won't just happen to us we have to be proactive 
towards um, the things we need, we want to achieve in life. So that's the major thing. That's what keep people, like, even when the motivation is not there, when you, re when you re realize that what you are doing is important, it just put you out there and keeping in mind that you are providing a solution to uh, someone's problem will also help you. So I think those two things being dedicated and focusing on the solution you are providing to others, not necessarily the fame or the money you get from it or any material gains, just focus on the, the bigger the bigger picture, the positive um, end of the tunnel or the mm -hmm. light at the end of the tunnel. Just focus on that and inshallah, um, things will just be rolling out for you. <laughs> inshallah, inshallah. So I wanted to ask you as well about your um you know publishing route. Like how did you go about getting your books actually published? I mean, you, um you mentioned you, that you you know you from Nigeria as well. So and how do you go about that yeah. with your first yeah. book and even your recent books? Are you do you use the same publisher? Have you used different oh, publishers? Yeah. And how's the experience been in general? Oh, okay. mm. Uh, I've used uh, several publishers because um, there are um, different purposes I wanted to achieve with my books. Some are in-house and, of course, um, the, for, for the early days, I contacted a writer here in Gombe um, and she guided me on how to start. So I worked with um, a, my first publisher, mm -hmm. but unfortunately things didn't work out well for us. So I had to look for another publisher. Actually, I was reading a book and I looked behind the book cover and I saw the uh, publisher's number. So I contacted the, that person and we worked for about uh, 12 years without me ever seeing his face. Uh -huh, no, no. Like we just communicated through emails <laughs> and mashallah, he was such a, uh, an honest and loyal person that he saw through most of my house of publications. So when it was time for me to write in English, um, I had to look for other publishers and um, I, someone in Gombe that is also a keen reader um, advised me on a few choices. So he gave me a contact of one Richard Ali, my current editor and publisher from Origami Books. And that was how my journey with them started. They worked on my book, um, A Sack Full of Wishes. So I think uh, that's all. And my recent book, the one that I'm releasing on Thursday, mm -hmm. I, I'm using another publisher in Kano because uh, my other publisher uh, was a little bit down because of the um, kidnapping situation. He, he was a victim. Oh, so he, he was going through a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's um, unfortunate. Oh, Allah make it easy for But him. alhamdulillah, now he's back in his family and he's uh, working towards getting better. Alhamdulillah. So that's pretty much about my publication journey. Okay, okay, alhamdulillah. Um, so uh, where are your books available? Okay, we have um, vendors around um, the country in some selected states. Mm -hmm. And um, my most widely um, sp uh, spread book is A Sack Full of Wishes because it's available in southern Nigeria, northern Nigeria. <laughs> wow, like so Even people from the UK, India, and the US, yes, some people bought it from... Wow. There and it was uh, made available to them to, um, via my um, distributors. Oh, Alhamdulillah, that's amazing. Uh, uh, any of the books available online at all? Yes, yes. I also um, give out my stories on Wattpad for free before I publish them. Mm -hmm. That way um, I, I understand my audience better. Because I I see where the pro them because from the comment section from interacting with them through the comment section, I understand their their pain points and I usually try to um, incorporate it in my stories. Nice. That way they feel relatable to it. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, they re feel relatable to the stories. And the moment I say the book is out, like 
they are just out there ready. They don't Love even need take, any yeah. blog or <laughs> yes to buy the book. So I usually write free books on Wattpad before oh, I right, take them yes, down. Okay. And That's great. So you, you managed to build quite a community there then? Yes, alhamdulillah. So far, I have about like 4 million reads online. Wow, all of my From collected, uh, collectively on my books. <laughs> wow. So, uh, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Barakallah, Fikram, sister. It's been a real pleasure talking to you today. And inshallah, if you have any books, I mean, maybe any links to your um, books or your Wattpad, for example, so that people can get um you know a, a, a taste of okay. like what you're doing a good read of it inshallah and get in contact with you so they can get access okay. to your books in nigeria and you know beyond inshallah we'll put the links in the description okay. inshallah all right jazakallah khairan barakallah barakallah fikum wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum wassalam wa rahmatullah